Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to do an unboxing and we're going to do a comparison with the gun that this is modeled after and we're going to cover a lot of stuff today so I'm going to get right to it. So here we can see we have an SDS Imports TSOS and this is the Sagana PX9. So let's get to opening the case here. Nice little clasp case. Um, so I'm sure you guys, if you're watching this, you probably have done a little bit of research on this gun. Um, show you what all it comes with. So we have a <clears throat> clear chamber flag, a bristle brush, nylon, and a polymer patch rod. Uh, it comes with this holster, so this is the paddle attachment. You can also thread a belt through there. It looks like inch and three quarter would fit on that. Extra back straps right here. Spot for another mag. Some of these do ship with three mags. They're, those are becoming very, very rare. This is the two mag. So here's our pin punch. And size three and size two back straps. So it looks like it has size one on it right now. Um, I probably won't change back straps on it in this video, but it's just pushing out that roll pin. And, um, you know, if you can't change out a back strap, I feel bad for you. So let's see here. Then you get a mag loader, just a plastic one. These don't really work that well. I don't know why companies really include them. And then this one is the model that has the 18 round mags. You can see here, Metgar made in Italy and these are Metgar P226 mags so P2269 um, here I have my for my P226 I have the Metgar made in Italy uh, you can see Metgar made in Italy right there and these are the 12 round 357 40 cal mags P226 and I will show you that this will fit in the gun as well um, so that's one of the reasons that I picked this up. So it has a uh, like a, a grip lock release holster. It's polymer, and it, it's similar to the uh, Safari Land GLS holsters that I've reviewed in the past, and I continue to use. And where your middle grip finger actuates that lever, their system is somewhat different. Um, the GLS system locks onto the trigger guard, and this is actually locking into a slot on the Picatinny rail. So, um, we're going to see if this will work with uh, the gun that this is modeled after, which I happen to have as well. So you can tell, other than this is very FN-like, um, this is most definitely a Springfield XD copy. Now, some things that it has different than the XD that are going to be pretty obvious are is uh, it doesn't have a safety style scissor tr trigger. Um, it has a manual safety, which you can get the XDs with the manual safety. Um, they weren't plentiful, but they're out there. Um, interchangeable back strap, that's gonna be like the XDM lineup as opposed to the regular XD service. And it's a single side um, reversible magazine release. Whereas on the XD, it's AMBI. Um, single side slide release, ambidextrous safety. Same style takedown lever, although on the XD, there's swings up. This one swings down. Um, sights are similar. No loaded chamber Im indicator uh, that pops up right here, like on the XD. Um, but it does have the striker indicator right there, so we can see. Let's go ahead and show clear here. We're going to dump the mag and show you that this is indeed the 18-round magazine as well. Another Metgar and P2269. So your Sig Sauer mags are going to work. Here's that um, 40 caliber one, and we'll show you that that locks in just fine. Now, the one difference that I have is, for whatever reason, the 40 cal mag must just be like a hair thicker um, because it does not fire out when the mag release is hit whereas this one they come flying out but they fit and you can run nine millimeter on these magazines um, I've, I've done it with a conversion barrel 
in the P226. So, um, let me clear some space here. Um, we'll throw a mag back in there. Just We know it's empty. I just wanted it in there just to kind of show the complete thing here. Let's see if I can get this out of the way and we'll bring in the uh, XD. We'll take that tag off the trigger guard. So here we have the XD9 uh, service. This is actually a Defender model that I've just done some upgrades to. I have a video on that uh, series if you want to check that out. So I have an uh, extended magazine release on the driver's side, if you will. Um, burnt bronze, Cerakote, um, Midnight Bronze, Ameriglow Night Sights, um, and then I have a traction grip on there. Um, this is 16 rounds. These are the factory mags. However, um, an 18 round body would fit in there. And Metgar used to make an 18 round uh, flush fit magazine for these, which I believe is discontinued now, but you can still find it at a couple places. Um, what I was talking about before, we have a loaded chamber indicator that pops up here. Um, if there was a round in the chamber, it would be here, it would be up like that. So you would be able to run your finger over it and check it. Supposedly, you know, this one has an external extractor. And when a round goes in the chamber, it's supposed to bump out just a hair. And you're supposed to be able to feel that. Uh, I don't know too many people that rely on that. Front cocking serrations on both. I'm going to go ahead and close the slide on this one. Um, show that these are basically identical in length and everything like that. Um... Let me put my 16 round mag back in here and see so the XD is just a hair shorter just the thickness of that mag base but you can see the back strap on that Zagana goes down just a smidge whereas this has like a crescent shape almost and it's uh, beveled upwards you can get a full grip on there. Um, this is like the ideal size pistol for me. I, I find that when you get into the next size down um, grip length, like perhaps a G19, that my pinky is either about halfway off the gun or fully and I go under the mag. So um, I just like this grip length. It, it seems to work good for my size hands. Your mileage may vary. Um, if we look at if we line up the the barrels, we can see uh, they are almost spot on with each other. Even if you look at where the roll pin is that retains the striker, identical. Now, the other thing that you'll notice here is the dovetails are different, and <clears throat> from what I understand, is these are cut for MMP sites. So supposedly you can run Smith & Wesson MMP sites on there. I don't know. Um, I'm not going to change these out. This has uh, the serrated black and the serrated front. Some of these are available with a tritium post. And I've also seen some with just three white dots. So I don't know if that was a Canadian thing or, or what. But there's variations of this out there. Some of them are overruns from the Philippines Police, National Police. And they have a crest right here. Uh, let's see. Texturing on the gun is... It's okay. Um, the front here is horizontal and it is decent. Um, the back is that grenade style, which is very similar to the XDM. Um, and this is basically worthless right here. Like that, that's super slippery and it's almost like alligator skin. So I may end up stippling in there, depending on how this reacts. Because the the main places that I get my grip from is down here and on the front strap. And this does have plenty on the front strap. The front strap is much more effective than the factory front strap on the XD, which I felt the need to put a traction grip on. So let's see, what else do I want to talk about? Let's get this off there. Again, I told you that the trigger styles are going to be different. Here we can see that there is a scissor style safety trigger on the XD9 and, and a grip safety. And this one 
has neither, but it has the manual safety. I held a magnet to all the parts. All the parts are metal. That's metal, that's metal, that's metal, that's metal, and the trigger is metal. So, uh, that's cool. There's a lot of times you find um, striker fire guns now are coming. Glock has a plastic trigger on it. MMP has a plastic trigger on it. Pretty sure my APX has a plastic trigger on it. Uh, my SAR 9 has a plastic trigger on it. It's not a big deal, um, but I, I do like when it's a well contoured trigger like this, I do like the metal trigger. It reminds me of the P226 trigger uh, to some extent. So, um, with the striker being cocked, you can engage the safety, which is extremely stiff. I'm not sure what's up with that. But it is, it's easier on this side, somewhat. But it seems like there's almost like a catch. And then when that's engaged, it's very easy to sweep it off, though. So that is the more important of the two. But it's almost a two-handed affair right now to get the safety up. And then you can see it just doesn't allow the trigger to actuate. It, it's not the same in where, like, on the Beretta... Um, where the trigger just turns into nothing and it goes all the way. This feels like it's being blocked. Uh, this is a single action pistol. There is all the only thing that happens on this is the sear moves out of the way and the striker is fully cocked and it slams home, hits the primer. So, take the safety off. Um, let's see what take up looks like. There's a good amount of take up. And then there is a little bit of push after that. There's, I don't know if you can see here, but it's, my finger is moving just a little. And then there's the wall, and there's the break. And it is a light trigger. Uh, striker is cocked, so I will have a reset here. And there it is. And you could hear it. You couldn't feel it so much, but you could hear it. So, back at the wall, and the break. That is a very nice trigger. It's very light. We'll compare it here to the XD trigger. We know we have safe firearms here on the bench. So depress the the uh, grip safety, which you will do with a firing grip. We are going to take up the slack. There seems to be more travel in this, plus the scissor um, that clears the striker to allow it to go, or the trigger to go all the way back to be able to fire. And here's my wall sort of a mushy break it's not bad though and here's the reset it's pretty long for a striker fired gun but when shooting at, at pace you know <clears throat> if you're not just trying to hone in for accuracy if you're shooting for shots on target per se this is a really great gun to shoot and the trigger is extremely nice um, especially you know if you just pull through the break it's a soft, it's a nice feeling trigger. It's probably somewhere around the five pound mark. This one, if I do that same kind of pull, feels a little lighter, resets a little bit faster. Um, I'm not going to take it apart because uh, it seems like I'm being frowned upon when I do that. So that'll be in another video. Sorry about that. Uh, what I wanted to show you next, I guess we'll throw them on the scale and compare them here. Let's do that real quick. Ounces. 28.01 on an unloaded XD with a 16 round magazine. 29.77 on the Zagana with an 18 round unloaded magazine. Uh, I would guess that's probably because the controls are a little bit thicker, um, and this has, uh, the Ambi manual safety, which is metal, and it goes across, so this one does not have that. Um, let's try, let's try this in the Zagana holster, and then I'm going to pull out a holster that I use with my Springfield, and we'll see how it fits. For the Zagana here. So here let's pull this out. So here is the holster that was issued. Now I'm not sure if the rail spots slots are gonna end up in the same place. So we can see it's it's not locking in on this because it's not grabbing a rail slot. 
So that's one disadvantage to this holster if you want. I mean, you could technically use it for both. You just wouldn't have the retention. But you can see it fits in there, no problem. It fits in, like, perfectly. Um, but it's not locking in, so you would not have that retention. Uh, you would have to... You'd have to carve up your rail, which I don't suggest you doing. Um, okay, so let's pull out the holster that I use with the XD, which is this Teague I've done reviews on. This is their uh, universal IPSC holster, and it is set up with paddle currently. So the way this works is this has a button for retention on it, and um, there's several of these plastic-like finger-type things that allow it to uh, hold tension on the firearm for different sizes. So um, when I put my XD in there, you click that button down, and then that's locked. And then to release it, you just pull up on that and then draw the gun. So let's see if the Zagana fits in there. It does. Pulling on that, nothing. Push the button, and there's your draw. So <clears throat> that's a cool option as well. So this holster is a nice universal holster. It's similar to the 578 GLS. Uh, just a different style of retention, but it is similar in the fact that it's meant to cater to a lot of different size guns. So, this was what the tag said on it, if you were wondering. Uh, includes holster, loader, interchangeable back straps. This is basically for when it's in a display case. This is the 18 plus one. So, before you place an order, if you are looking at getting one of these, make sure that you do look and see, because there is one that ships with two 15 round mags. Um, I don't believe those are Metgar mags, that the 15 rounders. I think the 15 rounders are in-house mag or potentially made by somebody else for TSAS. So this one, to me, unless you're in a restricted state, uh, I think New Jersey might be restricted to 15 rounds. Um, but if you're in a free state, get the 18 rounder. Um, I'll show you guys what I paid for it. And there, these are plentiful right now. Even though there is somewhat of a gun shortage right now, you can get these and you can get them still for great prices. I paid... 282.56 for it, $15 shipping, so two nine, under 300 shipped with the two mags. Holster, it's you know it's a kit, it's ready to go. It'd be a nice home defense gun. Um, you could carry it again. Guns this size, you know, you really have to be determined to carry guns this size. By all means, it's doable, and I do it usually in the cooler months. Warmer months, um, you have to dress. In something that can cover this or you can open carry it so it's up to you um, if your state allows open carry by all means go for it if, if you choose to do so uh, the one thing that is kind of weird on this though is that this has the additional spot here like it would protect the uh, slide release and it's not ambi so I don't know why it's cast that way maybe in Turkey it's ambidextrous or maybe they intended it to be and they just decided not to. Um, I'm not exactly sure. But if this, in theory, is the small back strap, that's probably one of the best feeling guns with a small back strap. I would say that I have big hands and it feels right for me. So if you have small hands, this gun may feel too big for you. If this is indeed the smallest back strap, I'm not sure that it is, but I would guess being number one, they usually go up. In size so the other thing to keep in mind is you know the, the option of changing sights out so I have seen on forums or video I think there's a video series actually on YouTube where somebody put MNP sights on there so yeah I'm pretty sure you put excess big dots on there so go ahead and research that on your own if you'd like um, but again, MMP sights are plentiful, and you can get, you know, night sights, you can get tritium fiber optic, you can get fiber optic, you can get target sights, which I would consider this a target sight with the <clears throat> adjustments that are able to be made to that serrated rear. And then 
the tall black serrated front. That's that's a this is definitely a, a target style sight arrangement. So I think I'm pretty much going to wrap up here. We've seen the comparison. This is a 20 minute video, and this is the uh, the gun that this is modeled after. So your field strip procedure, like I said, on the Smith or the Springfield would be you would lock the slide back, dump the mag, flip the lever, and then you would take your slide off. This lever you can see goes up on this one. Same procedure, dump your magazine, swing your lever down. So um, for those of you who are going to review this video, I'm not showing you anything outside of regular maintenance for your pistol. So please, please keep that in mind before you choose to demonetize anything. So you can see the barrel profile is even the same. Where they both kind of bell out just a little bit right here at the end. Gives you improved lockup. So here it is. I'm happy with the purchase, especially for sub 300. Um, I got this, remember this was a Defender series pistol and I did get this for around that same price but it only came with one mag and it just had three dot sights, um, it was very very basic, uh, cardboard box, no case, nothing like that. Um, but I will say that you can pick up these mags right now, <clears throat> right now, the 16 round XT9 mags for like, I think Gun Mag Warehouse has them for 10 bucks. And I think I got a bunch of them. I've got like 12 of them now. I got them for like 11 bucks shipped from one of these places. I know that there's several places selling these mags. There must be t millions of these out because they're selling them for so cheap. Um, and they're reliable. They work good. So uh, pick your poison. You know, these are uh, made in Croatia. These are made in Turkey. Um, this is marketed by a United States company. This is... You know, SDS Imports is doing the, basically the same thing that Springfield does. They import the pistol. They don't do anything to it. So thank you guys for watching, and always shoot safe.